Welcome to Life with David. I'm David and today I'm going to begin the first of several videos on how to use a headless Raspberry Pi. When I refer to the Pi as headless, I mean that it is being used without a monitor, keyboard, or mouse attached. If you're using a Raspberry Pi for control, monitoring, or security, you'll probably run it in a headless mode. As you'll see shortly, knowing how to properly stop your Pi is key to the long-term health of your system. That's why I'm going to tackle system shutdown today. So why don't you join me as we examine two ways to put the reins on a running headless Pi. I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risks of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. In this video, there's a little bit of soldering, but nothing too tricky. The biggest potential for trouble is if you mess up on the wiring and damage your Raspberry Pi. But since Raspberry Pi Zeros are only $10, that's not a big issue. Now let's get started. Raspberry Pis are very fussy when it comes to shutting them down. You can't just pull the plug because that will often corrupt the micro SD card that contains the programs and operating systems. Even though the Raspberry Pi itself is okay, you'll have to start all over building the operating systems and any applications you previously had. This happened to me several times and it's not fun. When the Pi is used with a keyboard and monitor, you should always choose a shutdown option either from the graphic user interface, nicknamed the GUI, or from the terminal. However, when you don't have a keyboard, mouse, or monitor, how do you safely shut down your Raspberry Pi? Two ways that I will demonstrate include using a secure shell, or SSH, and a terminal program, or adding a hardwired shutoff switch. If you are interfacing your Raspberry Pi to a wireless network, it's fairly easy to control the Pi from another computer using a terminal program such as PuTTY. First configure the Raspberry Pi to use SSH. This is done using a keyboard and monitor. You can either use the GUI or the terminal. Then reboot the Pi. Next you need to determine the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. There are a couple ways of doing that. One way is to use the terminal in the Raspberry Pi and enter ifconfig. Note the IP address you'll use it later. The second way is to use the administrative feature in your router to determine the IP address. Log into your router's administrative program to find your Raspberry Pi and note the IP address. If I'm going to use my Raspberry Pi in a headless mode often, I prefer to set up a static IP address in my router for the Pi. That way the IP address is always the same, making it easier to connect a terminal to the Pi at any time. To do that, I navigate to my router's DHCP server tab and manually assign an IP address to the Pi. Having the same address makes it more convenient each time you log in. Once you have the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, open a terminal program such as PuTTY on any other computer attached to the same network. Enter the IP address of the Pi and start a session. You should be prompted to enter the user ID and password. This will start a remote terminal session on the Pi. Then you can control the Pi, including shutting down the Raspberry Pi. Enter sudo shutdown dash h now. That will shut down the Pi safely. If your Raspberry Pi is not connected to a network, 
or you don't want to be bothered with logging into a terminal every time you want to shut it down, you can add a power off switch. In this example, I connected a switch between header pin 37, which is GPIO number 26, and ground. Edit the config.txt file in your boot directory and add the command dt overlay equals gpio dash shutdown comma gpio underscore pin equal 26 to the bottom. That's all that's needed to enable the shutdown switch. I've tested this method successfully on Raspbian Linux 9, which is Stretch, and 10, which is Buster. It did not work on Linux 7 Wheezy for me. I don't know about Linux 8, which is Jesse. Here's a Raspberry Pi 3B with a shutdown switch. It only takes a few seconds after I press the switch before it safely shuts down. After that time, you can safely remove the power. To make my Raspberry Pi 0 W setup very compact, I made a little module that plugs into my Raspberry Pi that has a shutdown button as well as a reset button. This lets me either stop or start the Pi with a simple press of the button. Thanks for joining me today. We examined two methods of safely shutting down a headless Raspberry Pi. We'll use these techniques in the future as we make various monitors and sensors. I hope you'll join me next time as we dig into how to start your headless pie. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. And leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon.